Well, hello, 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 everyone out there in Tarot Land. This is your girl Zingaya, the Zen Libran, and welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel, Narcissistic Abuse Tarot. How y'all doing out there? I hope y'all doing well. Peaceful, calm, serene, balanced, grounded. Just have joy and love in your life. I want to thank y'all for joining me for this taboo talk. I haven't did one in a while. Um, something was on my heart, you know, um, to do this taboo talk. Um, just to speak to the women, you know. You know, ladies, I know that we get tired. I mean, you have a child. You're trying to go to school. You're trying to run a household. You're trying to pay these bills, you're putting food on the table. I mean, you're the superwoman, we're the superwoman. We, we built for this, this is why we're built to run everything because we're equipped um, to do this. We have the tools, the equipment to do this. So I know as your kids get bigger and they get more responsible, you kind of lax off. It's like a, a little CP time for you, you know? Um, they get older, they can, iron their own clothes, they're able to wash the dishes, you know, they're taking out the trash. Um, they're able to cook for themselves, you know what I'm saying? So when they get into teenage stage, you don't really don't have much to do, but to actually just guide them through what you instilled in them when they were younger and hope that they produce what you want them to produce um, for as being, um, a well-rounded uh, child, a well-rounded young lady or young man, teenagers. So I know we get lax because it, we don't have to, we, we don't got to get up and cook. They can cook for themselves, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to take them shopping for their clothes. They can get on the bus or, or ride with their friends and go to the mall. I mean, it's a good time in our life when we want to chill. You know, I have one. My son is um, 18, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a little chill mode. But you're going to have to remember that these are not adults. And now that they have a, a little bit more responsibility, you just can't lax back. It's, it's other things that you have to ramp up in, you know. The world, I know the world is not like it was when I was growing up. It's worse um, now than when I was growing up. And when I was growing up, I'm a 70s baby. And when I was growing up, it was, it's da it was dangerous, but it's much, 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 much more worse than when I was growing up. So your teenagers still need you. They need you now more than ever, um, being that the way the society has changed and people has changed. I mean, it's not like it was when I was growing up, and it was bad then. I say this to say you can't stop being a parent because your, kid, your children are teenagers. They still need you. They still need you until they get out your house. They still need you when they're out your house. You know what I'm saying? They still need their guidance. You know what I'm saying? Um, some kids um, don't get their individuality till later in life. You know what I'm saying? It takes uh, some children uh, um, to, uh, longer to get it, to be more responsible and, um, than others. I get it, you know? But um, you can't stop being parents to your children because they're teenagers. They still need you. I was witness to this one um, lady. Her daughter needed a ride to work. She usually catches the bus, you know, but her mom was home off of work. So she's like, Mom, you gonna, would you take me to work? And she's like, no, I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? It's my off day. You keep going the way that you've been going, you know. And she was like, oh, mom. She's like, oh, I don't care. It's my rest day. So she went out there. She went to work and she caught the bus. No problem. But I was pissed when I mentioned it. I mean, when, when I heard that. You know, so I said, let me come and do a taboo talk because I don't think that that was cool, you know. I know we get tired, ladies, sometimes, you know, a lot of times, but you can't stop parenting your child because they get m m mature, more mature. They're still, they're not adults. 
okay? This is something after my own heart, you know what I'm saying, that I take to heart. And I'm going to let you step into my life a little bit, okay? When I was 13 years old, um, I danced in this dance group. Uh, we would go to all type talent shows, perform, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, you know, that's what we did. You know what I'm saying? We kicked it. You know what I'm saying? Um, in the 80s, um, I live in the Midwest. It was all about dance groups and everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's how we had fun. I mean, we just kicked it. And uh, I'm a good dancer. <laughs> um, got it from my mom. She's a great dancer. Um, I... Um, I held my older, older sister in high honor. I mean, I just thought she was just fantabulous. And I just looked up to her a lot. She's three years older than me. Well, she was three years older than me, rest her soul. Um, so she was in this dance group, you know. And I used to tickle her because to her, I was like a mini me. You know what I'm saying? A mini her. You know what I'm saying? So she'll be like amping me up. You know, we did a lot of things together. We got in a lot of talent shows together. Even when I was in grade school, which was the 70s, me and her used to be disco partners. You know what I'm saying? She was be in the, what, sixth grade. I'm in the third, second grade. And we getting in a talent show. And I was a disco partner. She would take, throw me up between the legs, spin me around, because that's when disco was out. And we used to win. I mean, we used to have a lot of fun. You know what I'm saying? So as we got older in the teenage years, um, she danced with this dance group and a dance group was like, you got some more girls. She's like, yeah, yeah, I got my sisters. You know what I'm saying? So m me and uh, my other sister, well, all sisters, they was like, damn, your sisters can go. She's like, hell yeah, especially my younger one, which was me. So I'm the youngest one of the group, the one that they take and throw up and, you know, uh, you know, I'm all on top of everything. I'm snaking down at the bottom. I mean, we used to be getting it in, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, the dance groups was in uh, opposite high schools, you know what I'm saying? So it was really fun, you know what I'm saying? It's like competition. It was groovy back then in the 80s. So we went to this one particular performance, and, you know, it used to be a lot of us. And what we had a bad habit of doing is that we would get um, a ride to where we were going, but we weren't sure how we were getting back. So we all kept money, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we all caught the bus. You know, we didn't feel uh, scared or anything like that because it used to be anywhere between um, six to eight of us at a time. And it was, yeah, probably more than that. About eight of us at a time, you know what I'm saying, that was all together performing. But this one particular, we would usually catch a ride from somebody. They would drop us off. You know how it was. Give me that gas money. I'll drop y'all off. Give me that bus money. And they'll drop us off. You know what I'm saying? This particular time, um, some of the girls that we were dancing with, we were all good friends. The guy that was offering to take us home stayed in their neighborhood. So they knew him very well. So we thought, you know, they saw him every day because he stayed like almost right across the street from them. You know, so um, he was like, well, I'll take y'all home. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they knew him, knew him by name and everything. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I'm the youngest one out of the group. I'm 13. OK. And we riding in the car. He dropping people off. And all the time he's looking at me in the rearview mirror. I'm the youngest one. You know what I'm saying? I feel I'm the the one that's not as attractive as the rest. You know what I'm saying? And um, he was looking at me uh, in the rearview mirror and I was like, well, you know what I'm saying? I just felt uneasy. So he would drop one girl off, pass by my house, drop another girl off, pass by my house. And even the, the, the people that were in the car was like, oh, you passed the house, she stayed right here. And he's like, oh, damn, my bad. I'm gonna turn back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop off and I'm gonna take you home. But he would do it again, you know what I'm saying? So in the end, I was the one that ended up in the car with him by myself because he took everybody else home except me, okay? Felt a little uneasy, but didn't feel too bad because my friends knew him. So he drove past my house again. 
And I'm like, hold up, what, where, that, where, where you going? I live right there. I mean, he was kind of driving kind of, you know, kind of fast. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, oh, I just got this call and I got to go. My boy, you know what I'm saying? He said, babe, you can sit in the car. I'm going to run right in and then I'll go ahead and get you home. I'm like, okay. So he pulls up to this house and um, he's looking at his uh, pager and he gets out and he runs into the house. Okay, then he comes out. He's like, thank you, baby. Thank you. Because he was he was tripping time. I had to be here in two minutes or he was going to burn out. But thank you. I'm going to go ahead and drop you off. I said, okay, cool. He goes the opposite way of my house. And he takes me to a neighborhood that I am familiar with. You know, it was by my my elementary school. You know, I'm saying um, I stayed in that in that uh, area, so I was familiar with it. But he took me to this park, a park I was familiar with. So I thought, you know what I'm saying. But he took me to uh, uh, the other side of the park that I've never seen. You know, I'm 13 years old. I'm going to the park. We got our parents or, you know, adults with us. We barbecuing, you know, merry-go-rounds and stuff. I didn't see the other side of the park, you know, where the grown people be doing their thing, hiding out, doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's unknown to me. So he takes me over there and I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, uh, let me taste that. I'm 13 years old. I was like, taste what? And I'm looking around like he probably is like got some candy or something around her. He's like, no, nah, taste that. And I'm like, what, what you talking about? He's like, taste you. I said, taste me. I'm 13 years old. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? When I tell you, you know, I was always hippie, small waist, big ass. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom. You know what I'm saying? And this is when I'm 13. I'm 13 and I'm built like I'm 18, I want to say. And um, so I got my little black jeans on, tucked in with the belt. You know how you, you when you tuck the shirt in with the jeans, you're fine. You know what I'm saying? You know, but this was back when I was 13. So this man was looking at me all this time. But when I tell you that this man took me on the side of that, or the other side of that pork and he's like, let me taste you, you whatever. That man parked that car and he took his head and slammed it down between my legs. And I was petrified. And I'm like, what are you doing? And I hit him in the head. I said, what the, what the fuck are you doing? He said, oh, girl, you know you want me to eat that. I said, eat what? He's like, you ain't going to let me do that. And I was like, no. And I was on my monthly. I had a big ass pad between my legs. OK. And this man just kept going down, biting on my thighs, putting his head between my legs. And he did it so much that my jeans, I had on some black jeans. My jeans were soaked with his saliva. I was petrified. I was like, get off of me. He's like, oh, all right, get out. Now, mind you, 13, I'm supposed to be in the house by 10. Was it 10 or 1030? I don't remember. And my mama, she had all girls, one boy. And um, my sister was, you know what I'm saying? She used to give her a run for her money because she a little slickster like our daddy was. So my mama used to fuck up, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you know how it is. She was, what, 16, 17 at the time. But you know how it is when you're 16, 17. You know what I'm saying? You try to uh, cut curfew and all that. So my mama used to fuck up. I mean, she would fuck all of us up if we uh, broke curfew. You know what I'm saying? Mama let us go out have our fun or whatever, but you're going to respect his house. And when I say be in his house, you're going to be in his house at a particular time. You're going to do your schoolwork. You're going to do your chores. You're going to be in his house at a certain time. And if I catch you out here in the street, because ain't nothing out here in the street this late that you need to be dealing with at 13, 16, 15, 14, because that's the ages that we were. So when we used to come in the house late, I mean, and if we was late, we used to be like 30 minutes late or something. It wasn't nothing really big, but she would fuck us up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we would be prepared to get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So we used to rush and get back to make curfew. I suppose been in that house at 10, 10, 30. That man had me out there in that park and this was going on for like, I didn't get in that house till three o'clock in the morning. I've never stayed out there like hell I'm 13 you know what I'm saying but anyway he would say well get out and I'd be like fuck it I get out 
and I started walking, don't know where I'm at, pitch black, didn't care, I was out the car, and he would drive on the side of me, you know what I'm saying, and be like, girl, get in, I'm 13, I'm like, silly ass, and I'll get back in the car, and he'll try it again, and I was like, go on, then he's like, get out, and we did this over and over again, to like 2.30 in the morning. The park looked so different to me that I didn't know where I was at, but I, I knew where I was at. You know, I just wanted to get to the other side, and I don't give a damn. I would have walked all the way home. You know what I'm saying? And this was the time before cell phones and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know, this was before the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I guess he got tired. And um, the last time he told me to get back in the car, he'll take me on. So I got back in in the uh, car. You know what I'm saying? I had tears coming down my face. Pants soaking wet from his saliva. Do you hear me? And I had on jeans. And I was I could feel his slob from the inside of my jeans rolling down my thigh. What a beast, huh? I'm 13. You know what I'm saying? Never been touched by anybody. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I even had my first kiss yet. No, I hadn't had my first kiss yet. Hadn't had my first experience with a, a, a boy. You know what I'm saying? You know how you like little boys, but okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just was getting, I was in a tomboy stage, getting into a girly stage. You know how it is when you're 13. You know what I'm saying? So he finally was driving down, you know, so I, we finally get to the other side of the park and I was like, I know where I'm at. So he goes on the street, which is my street, but my street is, was a long street. So we was like on my street, but we were like 10 blocks away from my home. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he was saying something to me, but I wasn't even hearing what he was saying. I was looking out the window and I was crying. You know what I'm saying? So and I was thinking to myself, I shouldn't have got in this car. I shouldn't have got in this car. I knew something wasn't right. You know, that was my intuition back then. I was intuitive back then, but I didn't know what it was. You know what I'm saying? But I picked up on that. And I was like, I shouldn't have got in this car. I shouldn't have got in this car. And I don't know why these bitches, you know, my friends, let me be the last one to get dropped off. I don't know them. They could have went home with him. They should have made sure that I got home. I mean, you know what I'm saying. And they could have rolled home with them. They stay on the same street. They going to sit up there and get dropped off. You know, so I'm blaming it on them. And I'm like, I shouldn't have got in this car. I shouldn't have got in this car. You know what I'm saying? So he got a little closer. So we like five blocks now. You know, so I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I don't know what he was saying. But we got like to like three blocks. I unlocked that door and I jumped out that damn car. And I got to step. And he's like, girl, I'll take you home. I was like, fuck you. You know, I'm talking shit now. And then he started laughing. This man was in his 30s. So I finally got home. I felt good. I stopped crying because he went on about his business. You know what I'm saying? So I was in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I was like two blocks from the crib. I was at the crib. You know what I'm saying? So I'm walking and I'm drying my face and I feel better. You know, happiness coming on me. You know what I'm saying? I was like, it's three o'clock in the morning. So... I dry my face, and I already know I'm finna get royally fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So as I put my key in the door, my mama's standing behind the front door. She's sitting on the couch. And she seen my shadow coming up. And she got behind the front door. Okay. So when I opened it, I instantly covered my head. Because I was getting all type of uppercuts and everything. I mean, she fucked me up. You think you're grown? You want to stay out till 3 in the morning? You going to disrespect me like that? Bow! You know what I'm saying? Mama didn't play. But I ain't say nothing. I just took my took my legs, covered my head, and she was fucking me up. And she's like, take your ass to bed. All right, cool. I took it to bed. You know what I'm saying? And I sat there. and But I was happy I was home. I took that ass whooping. I was happy I was home. You know what I'm saying? And um, so... Some time had passed, you know, my brother and them laughing, you got fucked up with that. I'm like, yeah, I did. You know what I'm saying? My sisters then we laughing and stuff. But my big sister, she looking at me like, something ain't right. You know what I'm saying? But I never will say nothing. You know what I'm saying? So they used to be like, come on, you, let's go here. I'd be like, nah, I'm good. Let's go, let's go to the mob. Nah, I'm good. 
let's go here, let's go there. Nah, I'm good. And then my mama, I used to love flowers and uh, walk out in the garden with my mama. You know what I'm saying? In the morning time, pick peas and greens and stuff. You know what I'm saying? In the fields, they used to have big gardens that my mama and my aunties, them used to just go in and fresh fruit and pick their own stuff. You know, we earth angels, that's how we got out. You know what I'm saying? And I used to love that every Saturday morning. And she's like, you going? Well, no, nah, I'm not going. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? She was like, well, damn. So I was in the house for like a month. I didn't go nowhere. I went to school and I came home. Didn't go nowhere. Talked on the phone a little bit, but I didn't go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? My best friend, she knew what happened. You know what I'm saying? You know how you tell your friends what happened. And I told the girls that was with me what happened. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they was like, damn, for real? You know, and they hollered that old boy like, man, why you do that? Or whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, um, so uh, another month passed. I didn't go nowhere for two months. Home and school. That's it. So my big sister was like, something ain't right. Because she danced with us, but she wasn't with us at the time. You know what I'm saying? She was with her boyfriend. After the performance, they went somewhere. And then all the other girls, we know. But uh, she wasn't with us at the time. You know what I'm saying? So she's like, well, you know. So she came in my room. And she's like, what's up? Well, you ain't been out the house in two, three months. What's holler at your sis? And I was like, girl, let me tell you what happened. And I told her, she's like, why you ain't tell mama? I was like, I ain't want to tell mama because I was wrong for getting in the car. I was like, she's like, ooh. Who is that motherfucker? I said, I don't know who he is. And then she say, them bitches should have made sure you got home. I said, like, that's what I said. You know what I'm saying? She's like, but that's okay. That's okay. I got some words for them. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't go outside again until I was 14. I didn't go outside again until I was 14. I was that traumatized. And I'm sitting up here crying about it now. Um. Uh, I told my mom, I stayed in the house a couple of more months, so I was in the house about five months. And she was like, Sylvia, I ain't mean to go that route on you, but you got to understand my, my, my situation. You know what I'm saying? My, 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 my stance on this. You're going to have to do what the fuck I say. You're going to follow my rules as long as you're in my house. Now, I'm not having this. you you just beginning to be a teenager. I'm not having this out of y'all. I'm raising y'all by myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing the best I can. You know what I'm saying? So, if I if I if you felt I did you too wrong and I and that you you scared to go out the house, I'm sorry. And I was like, Mama, it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Because she done fucked me up before. You know what I'm saying? But, and I told her what happened. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know what I'm saying? She's like, but this goes to show you, don't be getting in cars with fucking strangers. Okay? Open your fucking mouth. Or you got the money, get your ass on the bus in public where people can see you. Okay? Y'all said y'all was going to catch that bus back and all y'all was going to be together. And I tell y'all, y'all leave together, y'all come home together. I was like, but mama, he dropped everybody else off. And she's like, okay. She's like, and I, she's like you could have lost your life. And I was like, I know. And this is why I haven't been nowhere, mama. She's like, but you just can't stop living. You live and you learn. You know what I'm saying? So I started, you know what I'm saying, going, you know, start going out and stuff after the end, you know what I'm saying? But that was traumatizing for me. You know what I'm saying? So I say that to say, if you got a fucking car and you got a daughter or even a son because they they, they doing things to the boys nowadays. They weren't doing it back then, but nowadays, well, they was doing it, but not as much as they doing it now. Man. I know you tired, mama. I know you tired. But you can't never be too tired to stop being a parent. So if you got a child that's responsible and, and she's trying to go to work. I mean, this girl was trying to go to work. You know what I'm saying? She ain't getting dropped off at no dance or nothing like that. She trying to get to work. And you got a car. And because you're like, this is my off day. Get your ass up and take that girl to work. She needs you. It's dangerous out here. 
especially if she's by herself and she was by herself and that pissed me off because it pissed me off because of what I went through when I was 13. Okay. So that's why I want to do this taboo talk and tell you teenagers still need their parents. Although they are more mature than they were, they still need their parent. You can't stop parenting your, your child because she's a teenager. Okay. I'm going to tell you another situation. I'm, grown, I'm, I'm a big girl now. I'm, what, 18, 19? Uh, I uh, was in college at the particular time. And uh, I'm home for the summer. You know what I'm saying? School's out. And so I get a job over at Union Station. Okay? My first job. Well, no. I had a little job when I was 15, but this was my first real job. You know what I'm saying? And I was proud of that little job. You know what I'm saying? Uh, within that time, that uh, the summertime, you know what I'm saying? I had worked my way up to supervisor. You know, they thought I was a very responsible young lady. You know what I'm saying? And I was proud of my job. I was so proud of that job that I cut my... Um, credited my how many hours I was credited hours I was doing for college I cut them down I went to part time you know what I'm saying my first job my first money my own money so I was more interested in making my money so I cut my uh, work my school load down to part time and I started working full time I was still going to school though um proud of myself worked my way up to supervisor proud of myself you know what I'm saying so the supervisor had to close and count out the drawers at the end of the night. So I would get off at nine o'clock during the week and uh, I think 10 o'clock during the weekday. I think that's how Union Station did it so long ago. I don't remember. Well, it's like that. The Union Station. Um, which was, I didn't know this, was down the street from a halfway house. So we would have prisoners getting out of jail and stuff, and they would be in these halfways. And they would come, Union Station was a big mall where everybody hung out, everybody kicked it and everything. So you would have a lot of ex-cons that would come through there. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know because they're in regular clothes or whatever. You know, everybody, it was a spot. You know what I'm saying? Um... Everybody found me attractive at that time. You point in my life around 18, 19 years old. Everybody found me attractive. I don't know why, you know what I'm saying? But they found me very attractive, especially the guys uh, <laughs> from that part of town <laughs> where Union Station was. So I had to beat them off with a bat, you know what I'm saying? So I used to be approached all the time with dudes trying to holler, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I can handle that, you know what I'm saying? But this one particular guy, Another guy in his 30s uh, from the halfway house. I did not know he was from the halfway house. But I used to get people coming up to uh, my uh, my restaurant. Uh, it was a New Orleans cafe um, in Union Station. That's where I was the supervisor of. So people would come in my restaurant because we served the New Orleans chicken and alligator. You know what I'm saying? Everybody would come in there and buy chicken and stuff like that. So, of course... My people going to be in there because they want the chicken. You know what I'm saying? So it, we used to be back, you know. So this guy, he used to come in there quite a bit. Um, and he used to try to hit on me. And I was not interested. I had a boyfriend at the time, but I just wasn't interested in him anyway. You know what I'm saying? Did I have a boyfriend at the time? No. Actually, I was single. Yeah, I was single. Because if I had a boyfriend at the time... When nothing would have went down like that. <laughs> um, so, um, it was safe. You know what I'm saying? I worked there for three years. It was safe. You know what I'm saying? The bus would drop me off right on the side of it. And I would just walk through the door. You know, I didn't have to walk to a bus stop. The bus stop was right outside it. You know what I'm saying? And it dropped me off. I could just stand right outside Union Station. I could catch the bus. I mean, it was so convenient, you know. But there used to be other people out there catching the bus, too. I was headed toward the east side, and they was headed to wherever they headed at. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I was actually saving up to get me a car. I had, like, 
I, I, um, I wanted 1500 saved to get me a car, down to get me a car. And I think I had like $1,000 or something. And I was in the process of saving. You know what I'm saying? Very responsible. I was very responsible going to school. You know what I'm saying? Still getting A and B work, uh, coming to work. You know what I'm saying? With my, you know you know how I used to, we used to rock it with our book bags and our books. You know what I'm saying? My bosses liked me because they saw that I was a, a responsible uh I wasn't stealing. Everybody in there was stealing. You know what I'm saying? They used to be watching people with binoculars. I didn't know they was watching me with binoculars. That's why they instantly asked me to be their supervisor. And they knew that their restaurant was going to be okay when they weren't there. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I used to go out there and catch the bus. This particular night, I was going one way. And this dude was going the other way. He was going to the halfway house. And I was going home. So he see me on the opposite side of the street. You know, I had been seeing him in there and he'll come talk, try to holler and I wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? But I like, hey, young lady, hey, 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 how you doing? You all right today? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just, just, just talking, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing. It was never nothing because I made sure that he know that I wasn't interested. You know what I'm saying? But this particular night, he seen me standing out there. So he comes from the opposite side of the street and he's talking to me and he's trying to, you know, talk to me. And um, I'm like, well, you know, uh, you know, I got a boyfriend. You know, I was really not interested. I didn't have one. But I was like, well, you know, I got a boyfriend. He's like, yeah, because I like me and my woman to look good together. You know, wear, wear the blue jean outfits with the boots and stuff. You know, you ever rocked it like that before? And I'm looking at him. This is a 30-something-year-old man, and I'm 18, 19 years old. Okay. I think I was 19. 18, 19. And um, so I would start ignoring him because he just wasn't hearing me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, come on, bus. Don't be late tonight. Just let me come on, get on this bus. You know, and he was standing out there with me. And uh, it was like, like quite a few people out there. But they buses were showing up and they was getting on their bus. My bus hadn't came yet. So I'm like, where is this bus? This bus was five minutes late that night. Because usually I don't come out the door until the bus is coming down the street. But this night, this bus was five minutes late. Um, so I guess he got mad because I was ignoring him. When I'm telling you this grown-ass man, he had an umbrella in his hand because it was sprinkling earlier that day. It wasn't at the time, though. This man took that umbrella and hit me in the mouth so hard when they talk about somebody getting so hit so hard they see stars baby i saw stars do you hear me do you hear me i saw stars and i was like what the fuck you know what i'm saying and you know i got a mouth on me and i got an attitude especially back then and i won't get ready to pop off but i'm like you are hurt by yourself he just hit you in the mouth something is wrong with this man Stay calm. Just get the fuck away from him. Okay. So, I ride this bus regularly. So, I know the bus driver. So, this fool gets on the bus I'm getting on. He gets on the bus I'm getting on. And he's like, yeah, baby, come on. We're going to sit in the back. And I'm looking at him like he's a fucking fool. And I sit up front. So the bus driver looked at me because, you know, uh, my mom worked for a bi state. You know what I'm saying? And she drove uh, over there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so they know my mom. So uh, he, the bus driver looked at me. He's like, what's wrong, babe? And I was like, none in the church store coming down my face. And I was holding my mouth. My shit was like, boom, 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 boom. He's like, what's wrong with you? And uh, I was like, nothing. And then he came, ain't nothing wrong with her, man. She cool, she cool. He said, no, I asked her. You know what I'm saying? What is wrong with her? Then he said, you with this dude? I said, no, nah, I'm not with him. And I said, this man just followed me on this bus. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so he heard me talking to the bus driver. So this bitch ass dude done snuck out the back door. And he was standing. You know how the bus driver be sitting there with the door open? You know what I'm saying? So he done went out the back door and they came back around to the front. And uh, he's the bus driver's like, baby, you want me to call the motherfucking police? 
You want me to call the police? I said, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. And I start crying and stuff. And uh, my lips start swelling up. The bus driver's like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. And I'm sitting up here crying about it now. I'm holding my motherfucking mouth. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I can't believe this. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, this my woman, man. He's like, you don't even know her. She rides this bus all the damn time. I, he was like, yeah, police. Because, you know, it's police around here. You know what I'm saying? He was hiding up to the Union Station because we usually have police around there. And he wouldn't take off that, wouldn't drive off with that bus until he got a police. So this fool took off down the street running toward the halfway house. And uh, the dude, the bus driver told the dude, told the police what had happened, what dude had on or whatever. And they ended up catching him. They told me the next day that they caught him. But I'm catching the bus home and I'm like, wow, damn. You know what I'm saying? So... I get home, my mouth is swole. I get home, my brother's like, what the hell wrong with you? What the hell happened to you? Mama! <laughs> somebody jumped on you, they jumped you? So when he said my jumped, my sisters come out, what, somebody jumped you? What the hell? Whoa! What the hell happened? And mama say, what happened to you? And I told her what happened. And they was like, what? So they was like, what? And then my mama, she was off that day. She said, I know I'm going to hear this about this. Uh, she knew the guy's name. I can't think of his name. It's years ago, y'all. And she said, I'm going to know I'm going to hear this about this when I go to work. I hope they catch that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? And then my big sister was like, I thought you was getting your car. What's going on? I said, I got $1,000. She said, my sister worked at McDonald's. She said, you know what? I just got paid. Take this $200 for me. And my mom was like, uh, shit, I, you know, here, I got 200 too, you know what I'm saying, and my mama was on the phone talking to my auntie them and telling my auntie them, uh, what had happened, you know what I'm saying, my auntie came over there, she said, I got $100, get your damn car, I woke up the next morning, went over there and got me a car, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, you either going to quit working over there or you going to get you a car. And my mama got up the next morning at 7 o'clock. She was drinking her coffee. I got up at 8. She's like, put your clothes on. You ready? Let's go get your car before I go to work. And we would have got my car. You know what I'm saying? So it's bad out here. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter if it's a, if it's a girl or a guy. If you able to take your children around, and that's what's back, what? In the early 90s. I mean, what? This 91? So you know it's way worse now than it was back then. You know. You can't stop parenting your, your children because they get older and more mature. You know what I'm saying? They need you. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they're trying to do something responsible. Get your lazy ass up and take them kids wherever they need to go. Hell, you, know, you never know. You could be saving their life. You know what I'm saying? Although I didn't ask my mama to do anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big girl. I'm responsible. You know what I'm saying? It sh shit happens. It happened to me. It happened to me twice. When I didn't, you know, they blame the woman for what she's wearing, how she's acting. No, I'm at work with a smock on. Nothing provocative. Big ass jacket on. I'm catching the bus. Hood on my head. I'm chilling. And this was before I was even smoking weed. I didn't even start smoking weed till I was 25. I wasn't out here drunk smoking weed or nothing. That wasn't even a part of my life. You know what I'm saying? And this old convict ass dude from down the street. That's in his 30s. Hit me in my mouth. Because I will give him no play. Hit me hard. Hard. So, y'all, if y'all able to, you know, take your children around, you know what I'm saying? If it's just not nothing ridiculous, especially if they're going to be by themselves. You know, it's a lot of times we've been doing stuff when we tired, ladies. And you could be tired and drive your kid to where they need to go. For real. Straight up. I just had to let y'all step into my life and to see how that burned me up when I saw that. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to take the girl myself. You know what I'm saying? 
But uh, be there for your children, even though they are mature and they can do a lot of things for themselves. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what's out here. You know what's out here as an adult because you've lived and you've learned. They still learn it. All right? All right. Thank y'all for joining me for this Taboo Talk. If you feel anybody could benefit from this little talk we had, please send it to me. I'll share the awareness because the, our children are the future. And we have to protect them. Even when they're not with us, we got to do our best to protect them. To keep them in a safe way, okay? I love y'all. And I'll see y'all next time on Taboo Talk. Y'all be easy out there, okay? Bye-bye.